Wonderful. So here we are uh, with the Vantage seminar. This series is about GAWA representations and modular curves. And in part, this series in memory of Boss Edix Hoven, who passed away earlier this year. So today we're very happy to have Hanukkah Virsima. And she's speaking about minimal weights of mod P GAWA representations. And Hanukkah, is it okay if we video this talk? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, yeah, sure. Oh, great. And feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, no, thank you very much um, for the introduction. Um, to start with, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak in this seminar. Of course, it's a great honor to be able to speak in a seminar dedicated to the work of Bas Eriksoven. I hope I can do it some justice by talking about some of his work today. Um, I did not know him well, but it was, of course, a great shock, and I have been able to very much enjoy the talks he gave, uh, I was able to attend, and in particular doing um, a summer school in Luxembourg some years ago, very, really great, a great lecture for us. So what I'll do today is I'll talk a bit about his uh, 92 paper about the weight parts of Serre's conjecture, and then I will move on to related work about minimal weights of multi gal representations. Okay, so yeah, this is a paper I will sort of devote the first half of my talk to. Um, so it's a 92 paper about the weight in Serre's conjectures of modular forms. So I will explain a bit more carefully what these Serre's conjectures actually say, but I just want to give you an impression of what's in this talk, because in this, uh, in this paper, in this paper, he proves the weight part of Serre's conjecture, but there are also some on a result of independent interest, and it also features a proof of a classical result, which was uh, before only published in some letters. So what is the aim of this paper? Be very helpfully summarized in this sentence. And um, so, as I said, I'll explain a bit better in a bit, but um, Rho here is a multi two dimensional car representation. And in this paper, he shows that if Rho comes from a modular form, which then by necessity has uh, some type, so some level, some way of some character, that then this color representation also comes from a modular form of type n, k sub rho and epsilon. So here these n and epsilon are the same, but this k rho here is a sort of predicted value for the weight. So that's one thing. And then secondly, also to show that this predicted weight k rho, which is predicted by Sarah, is minimal. Okay, um, so yeah, let's start. So throughout this talk, I will usually be saying uh, things like Sarah's conjecture, but in this classical case, in the case what we'll be looking at the first half of the talk, this is actually a proven theorem. Um, so proven by Kara and Winterberger and building on work of many, many others. Um, so, let's see what objects we'll actually be looking at. So we fix P to be a prime, and we let FP bar be an algebraic closure of FP. And then this is the objects we'll be busy with for most of the talk. So this is a representation row. It's just a two-dimensional multi gal representation. It'll be continuous, irreducible, and we'll ask for this represent representation to be odd, which means that if I have a complex conjugation C, I act on it by representation rho, the determinant of this action should be minus one. Okay, so what, given this, what does Sarah's conjecture actually say? Um, so it states that there are positive integers k and n, such that rho arises from an eigenform in sk, comma, n1, which is the space of cusp, cusp form of weight k and level n. And what do I mean by arising from? I mean that rho is then isomorphic to a multi gal representation attached to the eigenform that lives in a space. So this is a very, very strong statement, but this is what's called the weak form of Serre's conjecture. Um, so what is the strong form? Um, but the strong form not only says that this such a form should exist, but it actually specifies some of the properties such a form should have. So it says that rho arises from an eigenform in sk rho, gamma, n, n rho, where k rho is at least two, and this is the weight 
and Envro is an integer relatively prime to P. And both of these values are predicted right there. And this is the strong form. And moreover, in his paper, he predicted that both of these values are minimal in the following sense. So if my Gaussian representation rho is isomorphic to some rho f prime, where f prime is a form of level n prime and weight at least two, then as n prime will always be divisible by n rho, its predicted level there, and this k prime will be um, greater or equal to k rho. And um, so today is all about the weight, the weight part of conjecture. So we're not going to bother with the level, but I just want to say that this, the level uh, result here just stated has been demonstrated by Cario. And the one thing I already want to highlight, which we'll deal with later, is that everywhere here, we assume k at least two, which we'll talk about more in a minute. Okay, so now I sort of want to give a little bit of motivation of how you would sort of predict the weight. And starting with a result here of Fontaine, and essentially the idea is um, we know what the representations of the modular forms look like. So in particular, the, the local representations at B, um, if F is a form of small weight. So, okay, we have a form F, which is an eigenform of some type NK epsilon. I should say here I'm talking about not the modular forms now, um, where K is between two and P plus one. And we suppose that the eigenvalue at P is zero. Then the local representation at P is irreducible. And if I restrict the representation to the inertia group at P, it's given by the following matrix here. And these omega two, omega two prime are things called um, fundamental characters. Okay, so now we know sort of one side, but of course we want to start with general representation and connect them to these. Um, but we sort of know what these look like. So if we start with a Gaussian representation for where we know the local representation at P will be irreducible, then we know that the restriction to inertia will have this shape. And sort of if we compare these, even though this is already for only for low weight, um, it's, it's sort, of, sort of reasonable to set K rho to be A plus B, A plus B1 times A plus B. And similarly, so I've now looked at the case where if I start with Gaussian representation, the local representation was irreducible, but we can try and play sort of similar game for the reducible case. Um, so here we write omega for the multi cyclotomic character. Also in this case, we have a result. Um, so again, we take an eigenform of some small weight um, with some eigenvalues AL, and we suppose that AP is non-zero in this case, then we know the local representation of P is reducible, and we know that it looks as this following shape. So here, this lambda here is just a memorified character, and this omega, omega here is the psychotomic character, and as before, we see the weight appearing in this local representation. Um, and then again, we can sort of think, start with a general reducible representation and sort of determine the shape and then compare with this result to sort of come up with a guess, which of course is um, it's done by Ser. Um, so in this case, we need to split into two cases, namely the first case where the action of the well inertia group is trivial, in which case restriction to inertia just looks like this. For some A and B, we can always choose B to be at least A, otherwise we just swap them. And then we set k rho to be 1 plus b a plus b. Unless uh, a, b, and 0, then we set k rho is b. Because if for this va these values of a and b, otherwise we would end up with 1 here, which is something that um, we're currently not interested in as we're only looking at forms which, whose weights are these two. And secondly, if it's non-trivial, it's a little bit more involved. 
Uh, the details don't matter too much at this point, but I just want to convince you that there's a sort of explicit description of what weight you get. So also here, we know the restriction to inertia, we get these multi-cyclotomic powers, but he, this here might not be trivial. And so we have these alpha and beta, and we take A to be the minimum of those two and B to the maximum of these, of these two. And then usually we set K rho to be similar as here, one plus B, A plus B, but here there's some special cases where we have some condition on the ramification of the local representation I won't go into today. Um, where we add p minus one to the weight. And yes, yeah, so I've already highlighted that SER um, only considers modular forms of weight at least two, and so that leading to that in the case where a representation is trivial or a representation is unramified, that SER says k rho to be p. Um, but that's only because he originally avoids weight bound modular forms, as in his, one of his papers, earlier papers, he considers multi modular forms as reductions of forms in character zero who can, cannot always be lifted. However, in some of his later work, in sort of um, related papers, um, he actually does use a different notion of modular, multi modular forms, um, namely Katz geometric definition, um, in which one you can allow uh, weight one modular forms. So uh, this allows you to refine Sarah's weight prediction. This is something that Edix Hoven notes and also does. So in the case where the representation ramified, he defines k rho to be one. Um, so we can already see there's one sort of difference here between Edix Hoven's refinement and Sarah's original weight recipe. And we'll write k sub rho for Sarah's original weight. And we will almost always have equality between these two versions. We will always have um, that Sarah's weight is always bigger than Edix Hovens. Um, and it differs only in two cases, and that's in the reducible case. And the first one we've already seen is when um, representation is unramified, in which case we have one for Edix Hoven and p for Sarah. And there's another special case uh, only arising when P is due in these sort of conditions, which have to do with the, some, some uh, condition on the character. OK, so now we've done all that. Let's actually look at the statement and the main theorem of um, this paper I'm talking about today. Um, so we have one of these representations. They're continuous, irreducible, and odd. And now suppose we have an eigenform we have weight n, um, oh, sorry, level n, weight k in character epsilon. And suppose we already know that rho is isomorphic to rho g. And then we sort of get different parts to his fear of Oops. Um, So we get this existence with regards to Sarah's recipe. So this says that indeed there should also exist an eigenform f of the same level, same character, but this k sub ray is predicted prescribed weight. Um, whose gar representation is isomorphic to rho, and moreover proves that, in fact, this is also the case for his uh, adjusted weight. So here we have this k rho in brackets. And then finally, also shows that there is no eigenform of level prime to p and of weight less than k rho, whose associated gar representation is isomorphic to rho. Um, so under this assumption, level prime to p, this weight is indeed minimal. Um, and so yeah, so what do I want to do? So here we have the statement. I want to talk a little bit about the ideas um, that occur in the proof of this statement. I won't go into most technical details as I would be a bit longer. Um, but yeah, we'll see a bit of how this works um, also because that sort of relates to other things I want to say about weights uh, of multi gal representations. So how does one sort of start to prove it? Well, we've I've already seen that we have these results on these representations of lower weight forms. And a sort of way to sort of prove this statement is to show that if I have any form of some weight k, even a large weight, it in some sense comes from a form of a lower weight. So there's a statement here, which um, 
our radar. So if we have one of these eigenforms of just some any type um, and k epsilon, then there exists integers i and k prime, where i is between zero and p minus one, and k prime is at most p plus one. And an eigenform g of the same level and character, but of this new weight, this new small weight, k prime, such that f and the i-th power of the beta operator of g have the same eigenvalues for all hack operators away from p. But what does this mean? So we start with any eigenform and we can sort of get sort of similar um, eigenform, particular similar representations um, from a lower waveform after acting on it by a theta operator. So we'll talk a little bit more about um, the theta operator in a moment. We'll see this in a talk. But first, I want to sort of say that this form um, is sort of crucial for the proof of the weight bar of the conjecture is that this form here is not necessarily unique. Um, so in the case where um, the eigenvalue of p of g is non-zero, there might exist a companion, something that's called a companion form, which is just another form, g prime, of also a small weight, p plus one minus k prime, whose eigenvalues are related to the eigenvalues of g by just some powers of m. And, and there's a criterion for this in terms for in terms of the ramification of the um, associated Gal representation, which has become uh, relevant in the proof of the weight bar section section. But for now, I want to talk about this theta operator we saw here, because we saw that we could produce these low weight forms, but we had this action of the theta operator. Um, so if you recall, if I have a um, multi-modular form and I have my Q expansion here, if I act in it with the theta operator, then a very easy um, get my coefficients a n here get replaced by n a n. Um, so in particular, if I start with an eigenform of some type n k epsilon and um, with eigenvalues a l, then theta f is an eigenform of type n k plus p plus f plus one with now eigenvalues l a l. So how do we sort of use this? So here we sort of like to sort of think of um, these feet operators sort of twisting uh, my modular form because that's sort of um, analogous to twisting the representation of the modular form. So if I start with a modular form F, if I act on it with a feet operator, if I then look at the car representation attached to this, um, new modular form for this modular form theta f that should be isomorphic to the Gauss representation of rho f twisted by the cyclotomic character. Um, but yeah, in order to sort of get to this weight part of the conjecture, we sort of need to study a bit more carefully what the theta f operator actually does to the weight of a multi-modular form. So since we're working with b, there might be modular forms of different ways with the same Q expansions. Um, so one thing we're looking at is something called the weight filtration. So if we let F be a multi-modular form of level N and weight K, um, then we define filtration of F, WF, to be the smallest integer K prime for which we can find a multi-modular form of level N and weight K prime, which has the same Q expansion. For sort of deals with this notion um, of working with multi modular forms. Um, this is sort of the easiest way to explain it. But equivalently, this is the smallest integer k minus i times p minus one, so that f is divisible by the i power of the Haas invariant. Um, so here, the Haas invariant is a multi modular form um, of weight p minus one uh, with constant q expansion. And so this filtration sort of, sort of measures how many times you can divide by the Haas invariant and then you take um, the weight of the form once you've done that. And we do know, of course, this, that if I have two multi-modular forms at the same level, a different weight with the same Q expansion, then their weights will be congruent multi one. Okay, but so we know a little bit now 
about these uh, weighted multiple modular forms, but as you can see from this theorem here, we reduce these lower forms. We actually want to know what happens if we um, to the way if we act on it with theta um, multiple times. Now, now we come to something that's called theta cycles. So if we have f be a multi modular form, um, and I act on a theta, suppose it's non-zero, then the theta cycle of these are this cycle of integers. So I start with just the weight fluctuation of f, and then I act on a theta f. I want to know the weight fluctuation there, and I can just keep going. And the reason why it's called a cycle is because in the super singular case, this value here on the left will equal this value on the right. And this doesn't need to be the case in the ordinary case, but it's true that the w theta f will equal w theta to the power p f. Um, so what can we say about these values? Well, we know that if our form f has fluctuation k, and if p doesn't define k, that then theta f will have filtration of p plus one. However, if p divides k, then the filtration of theta f will be smaller than the filtration of f plus p plus one. And so the idea actually here is um, we act on f with theta, we do it repeatedly for each time we do that, we add p plus one until we had hit something that's divisible by p, and then we drop down. Um, so what actually what happens when we drop down, we still add p plus one, and then we divide by the Haas invariant we saw before. Oh. And so there's work of Naomi Jochenvitz on these theta cycles in this case, but also Eric Sloven classifies them for these lower weight case, so for weights at the most p plus one. So let's actually look at some example. Um, so if we have an eigenform of type k, uh, sorry, of type n k epsilon, where k is between three and p minus one, and if um, a p is zero, then the theta cycle of f is given as follows. So we start with k, we add p plus one, we get divisible by p, we drop down to k one, where k one is this value here, and then we go up again until we get back to the original. Um, weight filtration. And so I barely get to show pictures. So here's a short one, um, just of this theta cycle. So you demonstrate going up, dropping down, going up, and we drop. We're in a super singular case, so we drop back to the beginning. Um, now, in this case, there's always this one drop. And this did not be the case in the ordinary case. So for some specific values of the weight filtration, I do always get a drop. But this doesn't always have to be the case, as you can see here. OK, so now I want to sort of try to sketch the idea of the proof. So I'm going to be uh, a little bit vague. And so I hope you forgive me for that. But I hope at least I get an impression of what goes into it. Um, it's written down very well in uh, this 92 article. But yeah, so suppose um, rho is modular of weight k and level n. And then we want to show it also arises from the weight, the form of weight k rho and level n. Um, so how do we start? We start um, by using this lower weight reduction. So we know that we can find a modular form f1 of some low weight and some integer i, such that a twist of our representation rho, that's the one we started with, is isomorphic to the car representation attached to this lower weight form. And so, as we saw before, we know a lot about this um, representation, particular local representation for this form as it's of low weight. So I've only shown this results by Fontaine and Deligne, but there are some other things we know, which I'll mention a little bit later. Um, and then, we also know how to sort of classify the local representations of rho. So we look at the shape of rho p, and then we find um, possible k1 and i. And then after having done that, so we have found sort of a form that works, but only up to this twist here. So we need to sort of untwist. Um, so we set f to be the i power of this theta 
operator acting on F1. And then we want to compute the Fichte cycle of F1. And then once we can show that, in fact, the weight filtration of this form here is equal to predicted weight, and we are done. Um, so if I just look at this picture, there's a whole lot of things I've swept under the carpet. And um, so I'll say a little bit. Um, again, as we've already seen, that this K1 is not necessarily unique. So one of the things we need is work of Gross and Bohm and Volok about companion forms. And, <laughs> and secondly, um, we also know that sometimes this K1 is not unique. It might be our form F1 might be a multiple of a Haas invariant. Um, but there's also, we have more tools um, also deciding between two and P plus one um, using some work of Mazur, uh, which is about the finiteness of P of our representation. But yeah, I hope this gave you sort of an idea. I sort of wanted to talk about these when sort of highlighting the beta cycles, because I want to sort of show you some analogs with this when we're looking at other characterization of weights of mobile cow representations. Yeah, so we're going to look at some other characterizations of weights of gauss representations, and the reason why we do that uh, will become clear in a minute. But the idea is that these are sort of the ones that um, we sort of know how to generalize in some sense. And um, so before we do that, we're going to move into a little bit more representation theory perspective on this. And um, so what we'll do, we'll look at <clears throat> same k minus two f p bar squared. Which is just the symmetric power, symmetric power of the standard representation of GL2 FB bar squared. And why would we do that? Well, we have the following result due to Ashton Stevens. Um, so again, here now we have to actually assume K is at least two. And then they show that rho is modular of level n, I should say, prime to P here. And weight K, so <clears throat> meaning, excuse me. Meaning there exists a uh, modular form of level n and weight k such that uh, slash gauss representation is isomorphic to rho if and only if the corresponding system of eigenvalue, eigenvalues, heck eigenvalues, apologies, appears in this h1 of comma 1m and symmetric power here. Um, so what do I mean by this? Um, so we get an action of the heck operators on this group here. So in particular, on this H1, and I, this system of eigen, eigen, eigen appearing in, I mean that the sort of the eigenvalues of the hack operators acting in this space are given for all, almost all B um, by the trace of Frobenius of my Gala representation row. So this sort of translates this modularity picture to one sort of more representation theoretic. But as you can see here, we have the level n popping up here and the weight k um, visible here. And one more thing is that this, in fact, is equivalent to rho appearing, or appearing, I mean the same sense as here, in the h1 gamma n of v, where v is now a Jordan Holder constituent of the symmetric power representation. And this is useful because uh, for any given P, these are very easy to list and there's only finitely many. Um, so in order to check this, you only have to look at these ones. Um, so let's look at them. So these uh, Jordan Holder constituents of this symmetric power representations are just irreducible representations of GL to FB over FB bar. And we can describe it explicitly as follows. You get symmetric power, act, the power here, and we get a determinant action. So this T is between one and P, or larger P won't be reducible. And this S, um, as we're working over G of the FP, this determinant here is order P minus one, but we'll always pick it between zero and at most P minus two. And these are what are called zero weights uh, because they have a relation to Thresh conjecture, as I will now describe. Um, so 
using this perspective, was inspired by this work of Ashton Stevens, Buzzer, Diamond, and Jarvis, they define alternative uh, characterization of the weight called algebraic modularity. So a representation row can still be modular in some sense that they define, it's too technical to state that here um, for me now, um, but the weights now are no longer modular forms, but they are these uh, irreducible representations here. And sort of given that, one of the things that they do is that if I have one of these representations rho, can you sort of say for which of these stair weights rho is actually algebraically modular? And this is um, what they do, but they start with a representation rho and they describe a set of stair weights. So for each representation rho, they look at the local representation rho p and explicitly describe which of these stair weights should lie in the set w rho. And then they conjecture, which in this classical case, we'll see a more later case, a more general case later, just follows from um, other works on Serre's conjecture. But the idea is sort of we get sort of a weight part in some sense of Serre's conjecture in this algebraic modularity world. So here again, we start with one of our representations. We say it's modular of some way. And then the result says that this set W rho is exactly all the set of all stair weights, so I should say irreducible weights here, such that rho is modular or can be modular of the weight V. So also here, just like we saw in Serre's conjecture, there is sort of an explicit description for that based purely on the local representation. So let's just do it quickly, do some examples. Um, if I have a reduce a representation, which local representation is reducible and sort of given by this matrix here, I have my subatomic power, the subatomic character, some power of the subatomic character, then the set of stairways has two elements, and these particular ones are the right ones. And similarly, in the irreducible case, where we have these level two fundamental characters appearing. I also get a set of series consisting of two weights. Uh, sort of just to say that this is purely the local representation. In fact, it's purely based on um, representation restricted to inertia. Um, so these are sort of easy examples to state. I should say that uh, in a reducible case here it can be a bit more complex. Of course, this doesn't need to be trivial, um, but you can end up, um, the maximum number you can end up is four. And, minimum is one for your set of weights, um, in particular, it will always be a small set in this case. But sort of we have now this alternative notion of weights, but we want to sort of go back and compare this to compatibility with um, k rho in the, set, in the sense of Sarah and Edix often. But the question is, how do we do this? Is a priori we only have these um, modular representations, modular in the sense of multi representations to work with. Um, so we saw in his work of Ashley Stevens that in this equivalence, we didn't really lose the weight entirely because it was still in the symmetric power. So one sort of natural thing to do is to define k min VTS of this stairway to be just the minimum k such that my stairway appears as Jordan Holder constituent of my symmetric power. Um, so now we would sort of like to know what it is and of course, in some cases, it's very straightforward. If my S is zero, my representation is just a symmetric power representation. And you can read off immediately that this game in V to zero should be super fun. Um, however, if my S is non zero, this VTS will not be a symmetric power representation. We get some determinant action on it. So we actually need to figure out when it shows up uh, for the first time as a Jordan Holder constituent. And this is something I've done through lots of experimentation and computation. Um, I sort of found expression for this. Um, so here is important to only pick my S here between zero and P minus two. Otherwise this result here is not true. Um, so we, but if we pick this list, then we get a complete and inequivalent list of stair weights. And the result is then that this k min VTS is given by these expressions here. Um, and we can see, um, yeah, we have two cases. So we have the case one 
s plus t at most b and f plus d. That's right, it's smaller than b and least b. Um, and we can see that if in, the, in each of those cases, if we add one to s, meaning we increase the twist of our determinant power by one, but then we add p plus one in each case. And we can also see that if we switch from this case here to this case here, we, yes, we add p plus one, but we also subtract something here. And in fact, you can rewrite this to be a multiple of p minus one. So why am I saying this so slowly? Is that because now here we see this sort of phenomenon embedded um, as this reflects exactly the behavior of theta cycles. As we add p plus one, and then there's this condition, um, which we still keep at p plus one, but we should have a drop after some point. Okay, so how does this work? So we saw in the case of the actual theta cycles that if we twist it by a modular form f by a theta operator that amounted to twisting the representation by cyclotomic character. And um, well, in this case, we have the following. Um, now if rho is modular of some way vts, then the twist by rho, twist of rho by the cyclotomic character, will be modular of weight vt s plus one. So you can sort of see where there should be a compatibility of these theta cycles here, as you can see here that acting on f. The theta operator um, amounts to twisting it by multi cyclotomic character. And you can see here that on this, this side, acting on uh, with this multi cyclotomic character amounts to um, adding or twisting by the determinant. Um, so again, let's just look at some examples um, very quickly. So we have the stairway of v0. It's very easy to compute this k-min of this, as it's just a symmetric power representation. Uh, but of course, if we twist it by the determinant, um, then we no longer get a straightforward symmetric power representation. So we just use our formula to compute these. And then we can sort of get sort of a notion of a theta cycle, which Called sort of algebraic theta cycle, where very similar to before we go up and we hit something visible by five, we fix P is five here and we drop down and then we go up. Um, however, here we always have a drop at the end, as this will just be our um, original representation. And in fact, so as I told you before, Eric Hoven has a complete classification of the low weight. Um, theta cycles in his paper, and for in the super singular case of AP0, this is exactly the theta cycle of a multi P um, fixing P5 modular form with weight fluctuation four. So I sort of like how you can see all these things are sort of compatible and actually reflected, even though a priori all we're doing here is this um, multi P representation theory. Um, but yeah, so we're not really there yet if you want to compare it with Sarah's weight, because all we've done is we've looked at this k min PTS. But in order to sort of say more, we need to consider um, this whole set of Sarah weights. So what we do, we start with representation row. We look at the set of Sarah weights, and for each of these, we could just compute k min VTS and then take the minimum of these. And we define that as a sort of minimal weight with respect to algebraic modularity. And then using the proposition we saw before and doing a sort of case by case analysis, you can show that indeed it's always equal. Um, okay, I just want to do a very quick example just because I want to show some more pictures of these theta cycles. Um, so we'll let B be five and suppose that representation was fixed to inertia. The following shape. Um, then by Sarah's recipe, k rho will be four. By this work of BDJ, the self Sarah weight will consist of these two weights. Uh, in this case, it's quite easy to compare them uh, as we find k min v rho is four and this twisted variant we find is eight. So in this, in this case, we can sort of see very easily that this is the same. In some settings, it's a little bit more complex. Um, but I wanted to give you this example because I want to revisit their theta cycles. 
So we start with the ones we just found. And then we can compute these k min VTSs and then we twist and we compute the next one. And we get these nice pictures. And the one the reason why I'm sort of looking at this is that because I actually want to know about the cycle k min w rho. So what if I start with k min w rho and then I'm interested in k min w and rho, but now twist it with the cyclotomic characters. What if I keep twisting that? And of course, if I've shown that this is always equal to k rho, where k rho is now the weight of Sarah, we can sort of get um, the theta cycle also with respect to Sarah's uh, weight. So here, these are the two theta cycles of the two series we saw in the previous slide. And then we sort of get an algebraic theta cycle for representation rho by each point, just picking the minimum of the two of these. So this matches with this, this matches with this one, but then there's a big drop here. And so we get this point here, we go up then there's a drop here again, so we get that one. So you see in this theta cycle, you see that the stairways that give the minimal weight in each case, they sort of alternate depending on where they might drop in their sort of cycle. Okay, so why are we doing all of this? So this work of Buzzard Diamond Jarvis, I've sort of mentioned it before, and we've sort of seen it's all very nicely compatible. But the reason for this is because we want to look at more general GA representations. So there has been a lot of interest in generalizing this, and um, mostly due, it, due to its close. Wait, can I hear it? Oh. Yeah, mostly due to its um, relations with the alignments program, of course. Um, and there's sort of many ways uh, you can think to generalize this. You can, of course, uh, look at GL3, GLN, or you can replace this by some other group you might like. Uh, but what we're talking about today, and also what my work is about, is by not looking at these GAL representations of GQ, where GQ is the absolute GAL group of Q, but of GF, where F is now a totally real field. And in this case, we have a nice analog of the weak version of Sarah's conjecture. So we let rho um, be the scale representation of GF now. Again, continuous, irreducible, and totally odd. And um, our totally odd now means we have a determinant condition of the action of rho of each of the complex conjugations. And then the statement is that then there should exist some Hilbert modular form. So we're pledging modular forms by Hilbert modular form, such that rho is isomorphic to that rho f. Um, so yeah, this is a nice analog of the weak version. Um, but of course, then sort of begs the question, can we sort of formulate a strong version? Can we predict or can we um, sort of present a more general version of the weight part of Sarah's conjecture. Um, is there such a thing as a minimal weight? Can we say what that is? So there's all these sort of questions that come in these more general settings that are answered by uh, Sarah's original conjecture in a classical case. Um, so yeah, what weight do we get for each representation? Do we get a minimal weight? Um, so it's a lot harder in this case, there's all sorts of um, complications. And the first sort of breakthrough on this is due to Buzzard Diamond Jarvis. So this is the work we've shown before and I've showed it to you before because I wanted to show the compatibility with Sarah's conjecture. Uh, but the main motivation is that uh, their work gives light, sheds light on modularity or the weight part modularity for these representations here. Um, so what we're going to need, we're going to need again Sarah weights uh, but the ones before were sort of specified, uh, we're going to need more general stairways. Um, so earlier they were just irreducible FP bar representations, GL2 FP. And now again, we get irreducible FP bar representations, but they will be um, of this group here, I should say, I'm assuming here that P is unramified, uh, but there also exists work um, on this um, for P ramified. So given this, what do these things look like? So if I have a prime lying above P, um, then we first define for each prime above P, we define a local stairway. 
which is sort of a tensor product of the ones we sort of saw before. So again, we get a determinant power, we get symmetric power now defined over this residue field here, and we get one for each embedding. Um, yeah, we make sure this t tau here is at most p to guarantee uh, irreducibility. Um, and this is sort of the local survey. And then an actual survey is the sort of, I should say, the external tensor product um, of VP, where VP is one survey like this. And so this already looks a little bit more complex, which also means we get sort of much more complex um, combinatorics and other stories if we want to work with these things. Um, but yeah, so I quoted the uh, BDJ conjecture before, but that was not a sort of full power. Um, sort of the idea of the BDJ conjecture that is that uh, in this more general case, if I have a car representation attached to a car representation of a totally real field, and suppose it's modular, then also in this case, Brunswick, Diamond, and Jarvis give a recipe for what they set W versus P. So you start with a car representation, they look, consider if the local representation is reducible or irreducible, and based on description you get then, they associate a specific set of stairways to the representation, so that's the set of W rho. And then the conjecture is that this set is again exactly the set of irreducible weights that rho is algebraically modular of this way. Um, so this is now actually been proven by work of G and many others under some uh, mild hypotheses of under on the representation. Um, so that's great, but so we have sort of an answer, some sense to the weight part. Um, of Sarah's conjecture in this algebraic modularity setting. And now the question is, can we also sort of think of analogs for the minimal weight? Can we sort of find some note, yeah, some generalization of these notions we saw before? And the first question we sort of need to answer is what do we actually mean by minimal? Um, as you see, these stair weights uh, consist of sort of um, the essential products of steroids in particular will be um, Jordan Holder constituents of some symmetric, some symmetric powers, but we will get tuples, integers rather than integers. Um, and now, for simplicity, I'm just going to assume that P is inner in F. Um, so, what does minimal actually mean? So, we need, in fact, to define a partial ordering. So, before I do that, I should say that the motivation for this actually comes from the world. Of multi hill modular forms, and also its expected compatibility um, with this algebraic modularity. And so, this work of Andriette and Goren on this. Um, so, we write e tau for the base element of set sigma, so sigma will this set of embeddings from a residue field into FB bar, should associate to tau, and then we define something called a Hasselcone. Okay, so what is this? I'll show a picture. In. In a minute. Um, so this is just a set of non-negative linear integer combinations of weights of partial Hausen invariants. Um, so we've in the classical setting we've talked about Hausen invariants, which are these weight p minus one modular forms with constant um, q expansion. Um, so in this more general case, we have something called partial Hausen invariants, which are not P Hill modular forms, um, a weight given by P, and one embedding and minus one in one embedding. Um, for example, like this one. And now how do we use this? Well, we use this to define a partial ordering. So if I have a tuple of integers, K prime, I say it's bigger or equal to K if and only if they're different lies in this asochrome. So is this non-negative? Linear combination of house invariants. Um, so, why is this a good thing to do? Well, you can show that if I have some k prime which is bigger than k, and if rho is modular of some weight k, by which I now mean there's exists some what be hill modular form, such as rho is modular of weight k, is also modular of this bigger weight k prime. And the way to achieve that is just by multiplying by the relevant house invariants. Um, so just 
for a picture. So in the case where f is q, it's just very boring. We just get multiples of p minus one. In if f is quadratic, we get two partial class invariants for each embedding uh, with weights one minus p and p minus one. So now we can sort of try, we have some sort of notion of minimality, we can sort of try to define analog for k min vts and k min w rho. And I say here, we would like to define, because I'll go into what this is in a second, but we would like to define because I set here a minimum with respect to this partial ordering. So of course, this is not necessarily well-defined. We don't necessarily have a unique minimum in this set. Um, but essentially, this is again, measuring the first time my stairway shows up as a Jordan Hole constituent in this bigger semantic graph representation, which is a little bit more involved. Um, the difference here that now, of course, we have this partial, partial ordering and our weight here now will be tuple. And moreover, I'm asking it to lie in some minimal weight cone, which is defined as follows, which um, is not too important for this talk. Um, but I will say that this, again, is motivated by the world of multi-hill modular forms. As for multi-hill modular forms, you could also define something called weight filtration. And Diamond and say have shown that the weight filtration of one of these multi-modular forms should lie in this minimal weight group here. Um, so now, of course, we would like to have some sort of nice expression for this as well. In particular, we would like to know that this does always have a unique minimum. Um, uh, again, if we have zero vector here for these S, for these determinant powers, this is very easy. You can actually show this is a unique minimum with respect to this partial, no, half the partial ordering. Um, but that's not always the case. Um, but I have, again, done lots of experimentation and come up with this huge expression here. Um, and then well, my conjecture, which unfortunately I don't know how to prove is that if my prime p is odd, and if my k min vts is in the previous slide, that in fact this expression should exist and should be given by this long expression here. So in the classical case, it just reduces to the proposition we saw earlier. Um, but the reason why I want to highlight it now, because again here, in this more general case, even though this is all conjectural, you can sort of um, think of this as these theta cycles, where now we have theta cycles for multi hill modular forms. So I just think there will be a lot more about uh, theta operators in the next talk in the series. But in this setting, it will be partial theta operators, theta tau, which add um, e tau plus p um, to the weight here. And I want to highlight this because it's exactly what's going on according to this uh, conjecture formula. If I again increase my determinant power s here by one, I add one plus p in some sense, which is the way of this uh, partial theta operator. And again, there's a situation here where sometimes I have a drop. So this is just the way of a partial Haas invariant. And in some cases, I add this p plus one. Um, but I subtract by a multiple of the weight of a partial Haas invariant. Um, so let's, uh, so I haven't proven this, but you can, in some cases, it's just easy to compute. So if I just have any stairway looking like this, you can again consider algebraic theta cycle. So what I do, I just twist by level two fundamental character of this. Um, and a priori, what I would do is I add one comma, because that's the way of the theta operator, unless I have a drop, which happens here if this integer here is divisible by p is free. So here you can see there's a drop, as uh, of course free is divisible by free. Here there's we add one comma three to the weight, then we get again something here that's divisible by three. We have another drop, and so on. And we end back at where we begin. Um, so this is sort of what I wanted to say, but then Ideally, we would want to sort of also generalize the idea of minimal algebraic weight. And so we would like to define this k min w rho to be the minimum of this big expression, and um, where we again loop over all the stairways in the set w rho. But yeah, again, we have to live with this um, partial ordering. So we don't know if this is always uniquely defined or exists. Um, 
done a lot of computational work on this. Uh, it's quite painful as you need to work through all the twists. Um, but if we have um, F, it's a real quadratic number field. And if P is inert in F, then you can show that this is indeed well-defined, meaning that there's a unique minimum in this set. And you can um, determine it explicitly. But yeah, sort of this leaves me with some questions. Um, is it possible to show that this always exists? Is there always this well-defined unique minimum? And what is it? Um, can we write down these algebraic feedback cycles for these individual Sarah weights? And then sort of more generally, um, can we describe these, again, these algebraic theta cycles, if we just look at these k min w rows, we twist by appropriate characters. Is that possible to give a nice description of these? And then also, how does this relate and what does this say if we want to actually look at the theta cycles of mod p, no more to the forms. Um, but yeah, I don't know the answer to most of these questions. So um, if anyone, some ideas I'd be happy to hear, but that was all I wanted to say today. Thank you for listening.